guys, it's Francesca. I'm here today to show you how to do a nice blended background. In our classes, I feel like a lot of people have their own style and technique, which we talk a lot about. Um, some people prefer more of a textured sort of background with a lot of brush strokes and dimension in there. Other people like it to be a little bit more of a blended soft look. So today I'm gonna to show you the blended soft look. I'm gonna start off with my brush and get it a little bit wet. I always like to squeeze that extra water out over the cup to get the excess out. And today we are working with yellow okra, burnt umber, and titanium white. This is going to be our background for a new painting that we're adding to our gallery. We're adding another coffee painting. What I'm going to do is start off with a darker edge around the um, frame of the canvas and work our way into the center to give it a little bit more of a brighter look. So I'm going to load my brush with some burnt umber. And by loading it, I just like to kind of get the brush on there, slide it back and forth to get the paint in there nice and good. And what I'm gonna do is think about um, being at a racetrack, okay? So we're gonna start up here, which is our start. We're gonna work all the way around until we get to our finish. And then we're gonna keep on going with different colors until we get to the very end, which is going to be the center, okay? So what I'm going to do is start with one, one side of my brush, just like this, flip it to the next, and kind of go back and forth. So crisscrossing. A lot of times in our classes we'll refer to it as our symphony brush stroke where you kind of pretend like you're conducting a symphony so you're going back and forth on each side. Okay, so I'm going to repeat that all the way around. And you can add as much of the burnt umber as you want to the brush. A lot of people ask, well how often should I be applying it? It all depends on your preference. If you want it to be a little bit more rich of a background, you're going to use a little bit more paint. I personally like to have a little bit more of a soft look, so I don't like to load the paint on quite as much. You can always add more as you go, it's just harder to take it back. So start off with a little bit, you'd be surprised how much goes a long way. And if you've been to one of our classes, you know the importance of not using too much water. So I always like to remind people to not dunk your brush all the way in. We're actually going to just kind of meet the tip of the brush to the surface of the water. And I even like to sometimes put my brush upside down just like this so the water sets in. And then I'll go back to the canvas. And I'm not in a rush to get all the way around. But... Now to really get that sort of blended look, if you notice, it's already kind of soft. You can't see the brush strokes quite as much. You want to not lift your brush as much. The more you lift your brush with each brush stroke, the more you're going to see that texture. So if you're wanting to have this blended look, you're going to want to keep your brush pretty close to the canvas with each brush stroke. Just getting a little bit of water, setting it upside down so the water gets in there nice and good, and then going back. Okay, so I'm all the way back around, kind of getting some of where I started a little bit wet. If by the time that you get all the way around it is dry right here, it is important to go and kind of apply a little bit more of the paint. That way our next color will take a little bit better. So now what I'm going to do is make sure that you don't have too much of paint in there so you just don't want it globbed in. You can have some of it, but I personally don't like to wash my brush off as I do this sort of background. I like to add each color and kind of help them come to a natural gradient. So now I'll get a little bit of my yellow okra on both sides of the brush. And again, I'm gonna start right where we had started up at our beginning of the finish line. 
and I'll start to work it in. Now don't be afraid of grabbing onto that brown as well. The colors can touch. And I'm dragging it up a little bit. So if you notice, I'm going all the way to the edge of the canvas where that brown was. So it is kind of lightening up the brown a bit, but I do want it to have a nice blended look. So again, I'm not lifting my brush as much. I'm keeping it pretty close to the canvas as I bring it around. And if you're coming across any spots that might be still a little bit dry with the brown, you can always get a little bit of the brown on your brush and apply it in there to help the colors kind of blend and work together. Sometimes I need a little bit of help. Right in here, I had a little bit, probably too much water in here, so I'm just kind of spreading that paint around to get rid of that excess water. All right, so I brought it all the way around. We're at our second lap, and I'm just gonna give it a little bit more of that yellow to brighten it up. I'm going a little bit heavier on the yellow as I bring it in, and I'm not pressing too, too hard. That way it doesn't pull the dark underneath our yellow. And we're also kind of placing it on top without trying to pick up the brown in the background. All right, so now that I brought it about in here, all the way over here, I have about this much space in the center of it. I still want my background to be a little bit brighter, so that's why it's starting out a little bit darker on the, on the perimeter of our canvas. That way, once I add my white in here, I can kind of spread it back out a little bit like we were doing with that yellow. So now I'm not washing my brush off. I'm actually keeping all those colors on, getting a little bit of white on there. And I'm going to start the beginning of our lap right there and working it on in. And if you look, I'm kind of dragging the white up a bit into our other colors and slowly bringing it down. And again, I'm not pressing too hard. The harder you press, it's, the more it's going to really pull the colors together. And I don't need to since the paint is still pretty wet. I'm applying on the, on the white part of our canvas and bringing it out. And if you look, it's already kind of light, making everything else lighter and much smoother. That white really helps mute the colors out. And again, if you get to a part like right here, if you feel like it's not blending very well and you're seeing a contrast between our white and the dark, you can always get a little bit of your other color. I'm just barely tapping my palette with some brown so that way it's just a little bit on the brush and working it in. But I'm just gonna be dragging it out. I want that soft color. 